really be warm, or rather, excuse me, <clears throat> it must really be cool outside because my water is so cold. Okay, it is the pretty coach here, you guys. It is Jude, um, and I'm coming to have this really candid conversation. This is, you can call this a video diary. And, oh, okay, that feels good. So, I actually do these a lot. I just rarely ever show them, but I really feel inspired to, to show them. Um, I don't know if I'll do that for everyone. I know that there are some that are just for me with spirit. So, as I'm led, I'll do it. I will say that I feel like this video will be all over the place, but my intention is to my hope is that something that I say in the sharing of my own truth will just resonate with someone else um, and just be understood. Okay, so without further ado, let's hop into this conversation that I have with myself very, very often. And when I say often, I don't mean like I have this very one, but I'm saying I do this very often. So, um, <clears throat> I have been and had been receiving messages from my inner self, my inner guidance team that I needed to let go of the relationship that I had been in for the past two years at the time. And it was just hard to adjust to and really hard to adhere to at the time because I am a person who once I give my word to someone you know I really 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 work hard especially let me just not even just say my word it's it has to be a combination of in my opinion my word and my heart once I do those things okay I prefer to just work, work towards the connection, whether it's really hard or whether that shit is easy. I prefer to work towards the connection. I prefer to continue to think and speak life into the connection. However, um, <clears throat> if this were a marriage, like to a degree, I do feel that it was. I would say that I finally, first of all, got the courage to do what Spirit had been telling me. Um, Spirit told me first directly, right? But then I started, you know, looking for guidance and insight. I got to take this off my thumb. It's bothering me now. I started looking for guidance and insight through other forms of divination so looking at other readings doing my own readings and stuff like that and what I could take I got mis mixed messages a lot of times um you know there were some messages that said stay with the person and you know things could turn around <clears throat> turn around excuse me and then there were other instances where it was like let this go heal move on you know not to say that it may never come around again but just like you need to let this go and you need to heal and move on so I would be back and forth in my own heart mind and I would tell this person and this is a terrible trait that I do have and <clears throat> when I look back on the patterns of my behaviors 
in relationships when I'm pretty much battling myself on the connection um, because of some intuitive insight that I've received that I'm not yet ready to adhere to. I double dutch, you know, and my emotions are kind of back and forth as well about the connection. I tend to think aloud with my partner. I share certain information with them. I, I want to have these conversations and this dialogue with them that a lot of times, one, they're not ready for, and two, they are not viewing things through the lenses that I tend to be. So with that being said, they don't even understand half the time what I'm talking about. And if they do understand, they absolutely view it a different way. They disagree. They disagree. So that rarely ever works out in my favor. And it just constantly looks like I am fighting against the connection to them. But in essence, I feel, and don't get me wrong, being a person who has experienced a whole hell of a lot of trauma um, and who I believe has not healed all of said traumas, I do understand that there's a possibility that I can see certain things through the lens of the trauma. But I also believe that my intuition it's very, very, very strong. Like, for those who are into astrology, which hopefully it'll be people who are watching this video on my page and on my channel, um, I'm going to drop some tidbits of information about me so that you can get, hopefully, some, some clarity on what I mean. I am a Leo sun, Leo moon, and I have a Mercury in Cancer. So if you are new and you don't really know what that may mean, it means that, um, I'll start with the Mercury, with the way that Mercury works in our planet. I mean, well, yeah, in our planets and in our charts and how it influences human nature is Mercury deals with our thoughts and, um, that's both thoughts coming into us and thoughts going out. So the way that we receive and interpret messages, as well as the way that we, put out and express messages okay that's what mercury tends to deal with how we communicate how do we share the intel and the insight that we have with people in the world my mercury being in cancer first of all it means that i feel everything um i'll just say very deeply a cancer lives at the bottom of the ocean <laughs> along with like the Scorpio energy um, and the Pisces energy right but all water signs are considered to be extremely intuitive and they all have psychic capabilities not to say that other elements do not but when it comes to some of the most powerful mystics and psychics you know <laughs> Them water signs are going to be in there really strong. So with that being said, um, I channel a lot through my feelings, through spirit, through my emotions. I'm for sure a medium. So, you know, I do have to learn how to sift through the messages that I receive. However, just being me over all these like damn years, I have began to take notice of like, okay, what's just Jude um, with her fears and her concerns and her traumas and her heal versions versus what comes from spirit and what I have found the way that I've learned for myself to differentiate the voice of what I would say God or the universe or my spirit team is that when I feel like when it's my spirit team, the message continues to come through repeatedly. Um, and by repeatedly, it could be cyclical, but it's going to keep on coming up for me. Um, it'll continue to be in my thoughts. And then after a while, I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to mention this thing. 
So with that being said, this idea and concept, oh, another way that it comes up for me is in my dreams. So water can deal with our dream state as well. So, um, and the way to re receive messages. So I'm a heavy, heavy dreamer. And I just had so many different dreams. Um, I had, in my opinion, past life connection dreams about the partner that I was with. And I tend to do that with every partner that I've ever been seriously connected to. I have dreamt about them all in some way, shape, or form. There has been information, in my opinion, that was revealed to me through my dreams about them and about our connection, okay? Okay. This relationship was no different. I had a series of different dreams. Um, I know that we were, I knew basically that we had known each other before. Put it like that, okay? So, there was one particular dream that I had that I was, the person in the dream, and I wound up being on some huge apparatus, metal, <clears throat> it was really tall, like, almost like a Ferris wheel, but it was like one of those balls, I don't even know how to describe it, but consider a rubber band ball that you can kind of see through, with not a lot of rubber bands, but it was all metal, so it was like some type of um, sculpture that crisscrossed in a lot of different ways, but it was a, a spherical object. Somehow in the dream, I'm hanging on to like, damn near like the highest point of this particular apparatus. And my spirit is telling me to let go. When I say my spirit, in our dreams, our consciousness is awake the whole entire time. And our consciousness is what always remains awake. It's what follows us into every dimension that we're in. So... I'm in the dream and I hear myself talking to me and it's telling me to let go. And I'm having a hard time letting go because first of all, this looks scary. I am up super, super high in this apparatus. And in my mind, if I let go, I'm going to fall and I'm going to either be severely freaking hurt or I'm going to die. That's how I feel in this dream. And there are some other things that I don't care to really mention because I really feel like the biggest thing and the biggest takeaway that I got from that dream was that I needed to release and I needed to let go. And um, eventually in the dream I do, but it wasn't without fear and it wasn't like it wasn't without resistance, <laughs> okay? And in my real life, I was currently doing that. So um, it's not that my my ex was a bad person, is a bad person. It wasn't any of that. It was more so of what my motives and my intentions were. And um, so first, let me finish that first thought. It was what my motives and intentions were when I manifested the connection, um, as well as kind of like how they shifted in within the connection so <clears throat> I have to admit you guys that I have manifested every relationship that I've ever been in every one of them that have been very heart activating and challenging and catalytic for me I manifested all of them Usually through my thoughts and prayers, um, no matter where I've been in my spiritual walk, where I've been in my faith, so-called faith or religious beliefs, I have manifested in every stage, period, okay? So anyhow, this relationship was no different. I had just... I had just had to accept that yet another relationship that I had manifested um, did not work out the way that I wanted it to. It worked out. It just didn't work out the way that I wanted it to. Um, I feel like I did learn a lot about my value, my self-worth at the time um, by honestly 
setting it down and setting it aside. And my spirit was like, no, you need to pick that shit up. Like, what's, what's wrong with you? At any rate, I wound up, you know, being asked to leave that relationship. I did. I resisted it, but I did eventually leave. And I came back home and was in recovery. Um, <laughs> let me just say that this particular year back in 2019, which was five years ago now, um, or was it six now? Anyhow, how many years ago it was, I, I wound up <clears throat> doing something that I feel like I never do after serious relationships. Now, not to mention that I didn't really have very many of those, um, I wound up immediately looking to be with another person that I had known from my past because I thought that maybe, you know, this was where you were supposed to have been. Like, I'm a person who likes to try to figure stuff out. I am a detective. So when things start happening in my life, I do try to get to the bottom of it and try to figure out, like, what's going on, why, how can I create a solution? Things like that. Um, so I also wound up really getting stronger with my capabilities of reading tarot while I was in that other relationship. Um, and so with that being said, I went to the tarot at the time to kind of show me what was to come Maybe what I was going to be doing, what my energy was going to be like, what the energy of the other people involved in the connection were going to be like. Baby, and what I saw showed me that I was going to basically um, get involved with someone else after walking away from that particular connection, and it was going to lead to me having a child. Now, at the time, the only person, like, sometimes when, as a reader, <clears throat> Whether you're doing a personal reading or whether it's for someone else, you tend to go from your frame of reference. So at the time, um, with the card that came out showcasing that I might have like a fling or something like that, it was the Knight of Wands energy. And that energy, for those who are, un who are unaware, it is Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius. So with me knowing the zodiac signs that are associated with that and also other energies, I associated this card with a specific person in my brain. So, like the damn, chaotic, solution-based person that I am, I did eventually reach out to this person when I got back home and we did start a relationship again, but it wasn't the type of relationship that I wanted. It indeed was a fling. And guess what? It also didn't lead to what I thought it would at the time. So it was a fling. It did involve us traveling back and forth to see each other briefly and very passionate sexual exchanges, but nothing more than that. Okay. So that was a little heartbreaking. So when I say I did something that I would have never done before, that was, I, it, I, I did go into another relationship almost immediately. No bueno. And I normally wouldn't do that. The Venus in Virgo in me, it's like, honey, you already know that that's not how you move. It's, that's not practical. It, that's not wise. Right. But I didn't, Listen to my Venus and Virgo. I think I was just moving on my Leo shit. <clears throat> just big romance heart energy, okay? So that abruptly ended because, you know, the person didn't want what I wanted. So that's that. And um, I cried and I prayed and I was just, you know, still in this healing process of even recovering from the other relationship. So it was like, I just don't know why I did that. And I feel like I should have never done that either. And eventually it leads to, that leads to like a little string of flames. Okay. Um, one that eventually did end up with me being pregnant. But the one that ended with me being pregnant, the way that that happened, I even manifested the pregnancy as well. 
Um, but not to mention that just two years prior at the time, the cards had already said that this was going to happen, right? So whatever. Um, but after, what's that? Oh, okay. This is from my power photo. So after the little fling that did not go the way that I would have expected it to or what I hoped to, for it to, I shut myself down and I was like, okay, that's not who you are. You know that that's not really, that it's not that it's not who I am. Like, obviously it's who I was because I did it, but I'm saying at my core, that wasn't what I wanted. And I moved in a way that I normally would not have out of, the only word that's coming to me right now is desperation, to be honest. Like, even if I didn't think it was desperation at the time, I think maybe it was. So, so I pray, do some cleansing rituals for myself about that connection, and I make a conscious choice to let it go. I think that a connected to that relationship, though, you know, behind the scenes, it was a person that I had been with in an earlier part of my life whom I decided to walk away from earlier in life and not really give that connection a chance. Like I felt like I may have, I probably should have back in the past um, for listening to my intuition. God, which was also intermingled with trauma. So I just remember thinking maybe that's who I was supposed to give a chance back in the day and I didn't. And so now it's our time to come back and try something. What it was, was it was a karmic completion and a karmic clearing. So that happened and it was done. And then I had to pray and cleanse my energy of that. And then, <coughs> hold on. And then I had to begin to manifest something different, something new. So that's exactly what I did. In the process, I wound up manifesting um, a new space for me to live, which it was my very first time living on my own in the States. That's a whole nother story for another day. Um, so I manifest, so like all these things are happening simultaneously. I'm back at home. Part of the reason why the other relationship and even the relationship before the other one did not work out was because one, here's my, here's my dilemma. I have a daddy wound or I had a daddy wound that caused me to seek out men who would be providers to me. And here's what I mean. The daddy wound was my father, God rest his soul, was a powerful spiritual male, man. However, and, <clears throat> and at some point in his life, I do believe that he was, he just was a really hard worker. And, um, he was just, I guess what the epitome of a man would be, but uh, he got tired. And my father was an older gentleman when he met my mom and, and started having us as children. And eventually with him and my mom, he eventually retired and stopped working and where he put his, um, ministry full time. And at the time, what that looked like to us was that daddy wasn't working anymore. He no longer helps mom. Um, he was no longer the provider and breadwinner. Mom became that. And for the longest time, it just seemed like mama would be so tired all the time. So I had these perceptions of my dad of not being a provider, but he was that very masculine, macho, I would like to call it toxic masculine, but my perception could be skewed. But at the time, I'm going to tell you what I, I did think it was toxic masculinity. I felt like it was something rooted in just, you know, men are supposedly kings and leaders and women are supposedly their servants. And, you know, that's that. And we are here to serve them, you know, whatever. <clears throat> My dad had <clears throat> that type of energy about him and it just used to rub me the wrong way and it always bothered me on the inside that he had that macho type attitude but that he wasn't taking that attitude on consistently within the connection of my him and my mom and then within the dynamics of our family like 
I'm like, the Bible says that, you know, a man who don't provide for his family is worse than an infidel. Like, these are things that would, I would just secretly think to myself or whatever. I do realize that my dad did provide, but he did provide, um, he provided in a lot of ways. But one of them was spiritual. Like, you know, he is the reason that I think my spiritual foundation is strong. I'll stop there. So, with that being said, because I felt like my dad was this macho, arrogant man who didn't really provide for us, I couldn't remember him doing a kind thing from his own funds, at least what I was seeing and perceiving as his funds. I just remember he had done one thing one year, and because he did that one thing, that one time <clears throat> that I can recall that he bought something specifically for each of his children... Like we were allowed to pick something out. It was a robe. And I held on to that robe for years. I mean, decades. Because it was the only thing that my father, in my opinion, bought for us. You know, I had pushed back in my head that it was from the thrift store. And it was 25 cents or whatever. I did push that to the back of my brain. But a part of me was a little salty about it because it's like, damn, you do this, but you take us to the thrift store. Not that there's anything wrong with a thrift store. It's just like, we on king shit, but we at a thrift store. Like, it just, hopefully somebody will understand what I'm trying to say. It bothered me for many, many years. So, what that created in me was a complex where I sought out men. And in, in, in my own silent, silent, and sometimes not so silent reserves, I wanted those men to compensate for where I felt that my father did not, where I felt my father lacked. Rather than me taking responsibility for myself in that way, because, you know, us ladies have masculine energy and feminine energy within us, just like men have feminine energy and masculine energy within them. So, but I was still not in, I still hadn't totally began to understand that part of the journey because I wasn't, I was more religious than, than spiritual. So, and all I had was the stuff that I was trained with in church and also from reading um, the Bible with a, with an understanding that was taught in church. So that was that the man is supposed to provide and the woman is supposed to also provide, but in a different way. I digress. So this was my motivation with any man. And so the prayers even that I prayed, the way that I manifested these people were, <clears throat> was that I was praying for this provider, you know, who's going to cover me the way they, you know, with my basic needs, house, you know, car, that this person was just going to do all these things that I f always felt like a man should in, in absence of what my father did. And in return, this person would get all of my adoration, my affections, yada, yada, yada. What happened though, was that I would always attract these men who did the bare minimum in certain ways. Yeah, it was more than what I was giving myself, but they did the bare minimum. So eventually, the lesson, each le each time I was with somebody, I had to learn self-reliance. My north node is in Aries. So self-reliance is a huge Aryan thing. Getting it for self, being true to self, all of that is Aryan related. So all in all, spirit has been trying to show me this entire time that for me, it is about learning self-reliance and self-independence, even if I'm in a relationship. But I'm the type of person that's like a, I can multitask in certain ways, but in other ways, I absolutely cannot. I can be tunnel vision or just like, I'm the girl who unless, I'm trying to give so many different examples. I'll start with food. If I had a plate of food that had these sections, right, I would be the girl who ate one section at a time, unless I had already tried these different combinations of the food and I know it's good, 
maybe, just maybe, I'll mix my food. But normally, I eat one thing at a time. And just like that plate, when I'm with someone, I am focused on that person entirely to the best of my ability. Um, <clears throat> so it's hard for me to do other things. And in my healing journey, the year before I met, like the, the, the same year that I manifested this partnership, I had just finally made it to the part of my healing stage from, we'll call him Mr. Ohio, to where, okay, I just got my very first apartment in the state. Of course, with the help of the government, but by myself. I manifested the fuck out of that. I am so proud of that. I will forever talk about that shit because it was a big deal for me. And it was a big step towards my self-reliance and independence. However, um, for many reasons, I feel that that did not last long. You know, I think ultimately it was my own mentality. I was like a baby taking steps, you know, and I, I wasn't fully ready for that yet, but I still did it and I'm still proud and I still maintained it for about three months. <laughs> I maintained that for three months. And then within that time frame, while I moved, when I moved into the apartment, I instantaneously began my spiritual practices. Um, I was working with herbs. I was working with crystals and just my intuition. And I put together, I created a satchel and the satchel was to bring in my partner, my life partner, and um, hopefully a child and business, all that. I was manifesting all of that. I meditated so much more than I ever did as well um, in this apartment. And I got so many downloads while I was there. And one of the downloads that I did receive was that I was needed to prepare because I was going to have a family. So... Armed with this information, I began to manifest. And shortly after these manifestations and the rituals that I was doing in order to get it, um, I did meet someone. It was shortly after the fleeing. Um, it was months, but it was still like when you look back in retrospect, it was short. It was um, after the fling with the other guy that had ended. I literally, like that connection caused me to have to make a, like I was already in the process of making this decision. Um, but this relationship coming along, I do feel aided in me kind of like sealing the deal. It was just in my heart that I knew I needed to let the other go because it was based on illusion. It was based on fantasy I was being sold a ticket, wolf tickets, okay? Like, period. There, there's no way around it. And it came out of the person's mouth. And when I thought about it in retrospect, there was one last interaction we had and I was done. I knew I was finished. Knew it. So, I was already in the process of releasing that relationship and letting it go for good and any expectations and hopes that I had had with it. This person comes in to my life and there are certain things certain signs that I asked to receive when I created my, what I call money bag, which is really M A N I money. That's how, I, mm -hmm, but it's double entendre for manifestation bag. When I created my little satchel and I also prayed over and spoke over my apartment from the entrance of the door all the way to my bedroom and everywhere else. I spoke a couple things like that. A, the person that was meant for me would, you know, be able to make it into my home. They would make it past my living room and they would eventually make it to my bedroom and in my bed. I know that may seem like that's a lot, but that I was, this is what I, these are some of the things I said and I'm really brushing through it so that I can hurry up and get done. Cause I've been talking for a minute. If this is already interesting and you're learning things, please give this video a thumbs up and also comment below and let me know how maybe you've manifested your own relationships that you recognize in retrospect. Okay. Um, even if it was beforehand, let me know. Okay. Uh, yeah. So 
So I prayed over my apartment. I created my manifestation bags. I created one specifically for fertility and I, you know, created, I said my affirmations over my home for my king or my husband, my, the man, my partner of life. And, um, the guy that I'm telling you, I was getting over the fling. That's not Mr. Ohio. We'll call him Mr. H town for now. Um, I got, I was getting over him and our last altercation sealed the deal because he made it into my apartment, but he could not step foot totally in my bedroom. And he never made it to my bed. Like, that doesn't mean we didn't do nothing, but he did not make it to the bed. We went back to the living room and was on the floor. And I was like, it made me mad. It, it just upset me. I'm not even going to lie. But then spirit reminded me of what I had fucking spoke over my own apartment and let me know why the fuck that did not happen. You see what I'm saying? Okay, boom, boom, proof of, proof of power. Just saying. Big Leo energy here. Long story short, that did not happen. Um, and so that's when I knew, like, you're not my person, and I'm going to have to fucking let you go. Did, 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 right? Not totally. Like, I, there were still remnants, but in a big way, I let him go at that time. So in comes this other person, um that I'm, you know, in comes this other person. I am open to the idea of something now because my spirit team have put me up on game that it's about to happen for me. But I will say, I don't know anymore for sure if I do think that was my person because I wouldn't have had the baby if it wasn't. So I'm not going to play him like that or myself. I do think he was a person. He was the person. I just don't know if it was like a forever thing or if it was more so this is how you're going to get your baby. <clears throat> so with that being said, I meet this person. My mom is there when I meet him one of the times. And she literally says to me, that's your husband. My mom has never said shit like that to me about any of the guys that I've ever dealt with and mind you i wasn't even dealing with this guy like this at the time he was my mechanic he came and he wasn't even my mechanic he was just a mechanic came to my um apartment to help fix my car per referral from a family friend of ours at the time that's how we met but i will say when my mom said that it made me be like on alert for this person so all in all <laughs> that's how we met and that was like the beginning of our story um eventually things progress to where he does come into my apartment and he does eventually make it past my door of my bedroom and he is the one who makes it into my bed but not only does he make it into my bed Cause that could have happened and people still dipped out and nothing ever came from it. But you know, just like another heartbreak or another disappointment, right? Baby, what came from that connection was my daughter. So it just shows proof of power on so many levels with that. And when I say proof of power, I'm talking about manifestation power. The things that I spoke and declared over my apartment home, When he came in, they did happen. So from there, I'm thinking that this is my sign. There were some other things that happened, like my I, my my ancestor, my dad. Um, I had so many healing meditative moments with my father's energy. Um, and I was told that one of the ways that I could know who this person was going to be was because there was going to be some connection of whoever this energy was. And now I'm going to say it was a soulmate. But whoever this soulmate was, they were going to have a connection to December 24th. Along with so many of the other energies that I uh, and messages that my father gave me on this fateful day before I even met this person, that was one of the things too that also was true. The mom has a connection to December 24th. Like it's her birthday. My father's birthday was also December 24th. So 
imagine me being like, what the entire, like, I know that I'm powerful. I know that I hear the fuck from spirit very, very clearly. However, it still never ceases to amaze me when shit is this accurate for me personally, for other people, me being accurate for other people, I'm just like, you're a medium for spirit. Of course, you're going to be fucking accurate. But when it's me, it'd be like, are you making this shit up or are you making this up? Truth is, I am making it up, but it's really happening. That's some powerful shit. I am going to stop this video here um, because I don't want to lose too many people. And I know that I probably have. If you made it this far, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Um, like and follow for more. If you'd like a part two, please, please, please put a part two in the comments because I've got more to share. Um, this is basically a vlog diary series, if you ask me, on both how I manifested a relationship and how I had to listen to spirit when it was time to even let that go and how hard it has been to do so. If that sounds interesting to you, like I said, comment for part two and um, I'll see you guys on that next video. Peace, love, light, and darkness, which all work together to bring balance and harmony first within ourselves because everything begins here and then within our world. It's been my pleasure to serve you guys in this way today. I love you with the love of the most high. Bye.